Hey, hey, everyone. It's Rich Sheffron. We're ready to get underway. I apologize for any difficulty, and I hope I'm still broadcasting on the same page. Apparently, I had some audio uh, difficulties, so every time I started the stream, uh, Ecamm would stop the, the stream telling me I had an audio issue. So if you're still there and you're joining us, uh, I'd love to know that you're here. I'd love to know that I'm not talking to just myself. And so if you can just uh, let me know that you're here, make a comment, uh, let me know if this is the first time you're joining us or if you've joined us very many times before. Uh, thanks, Don. Uh, good to know that uh, you're here and it seems like quite a few are here. We have Oliver from Mauritius. Wow. Oliver, have you ever joined us before? I don't think you have. Fritz, good to see you from South Africa. And uh, Ron Williams is here. And David Greek is here. And uh, <laughs> and Don Miner is not only here, but he can hear. And uh, Lynn, uh, Mark Shapiro, James Markey, Jim Edward, welcome, Rich. Long time no talk. Yes. And uh, Billy Reed, first time here. Wow, very cool. Uh, Herman from Argentina. Nice to see you, Herman. Uh, and Jim Jung, JJ, that's a cool kind of initials. Uh, Ron Williams from Champaign, Illinois. Oh, wow, I had a, a fraternity brother that was from Champaign, Illinois. And Milos, the I know I owe you an answer, Milos. I'm working on it. Uh, Oliver, yes, I had. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, Amory from Texas and Billy Reed from Tennessee. Hey, Chris Chico, my man. Uh, so great to see everyone. I'm happy to be here. I hope you're happy to be here too. I, um, I just got back to the Hamptons actually like at four o'clock in the morning. So, uh, a little bit, uh, burning the midnight oil, so to speak. And, um, you know, we, 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 uh, last time we were talking, well, we've been talking about, really the mental side of the game, uh, not just necessarily the Nana Fufu mental side, like feel good and that kind of stuff, but really how do you uh, perform at your best? How do you get smarter? How do you make better decisions? How do you notice the opportunities that other people might not notice, right? Like, and we thought about this overall context of like, if you, if, if whatever entrepreneur that you respect and admire the most uh, woke up tomorrow in your body, in your life, uh, and they were you for the next year, as opposed to you being you for the next year. In a year from now, would you be in the same place? Like if Richard Branson woke up in your body and now he was you um, or someone else, uh, then would they end up in the same place? And the odds are is not. They would end up in a much better place. And I put myself in that same category, right? Like I think that for most of my clients, if I was in their business, I could raise it um, quite a bit pretty quickly, but look so like someone like my mentors, like Mark Ford or Michael Masterson, or, um, some of the people that you wouldn't know, but are some of my mentors, uh, are the, like I know that they would see opportunities that I don't see. And they would also therefore do things that I don't do because I don't even see the opportunity. Right. So we're talking about this mental aspect. And last time we spoke, I, we were talking about skill trees and a T-based generalist or specialist, you can kind of say. And really what a T-based is, is a, a hybrid of a specialist and a generalist. Um, because it's a specialist, a T-based is, you know, the T is the deep, right? The, 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 the uh, vertical line is um, the deep expertise and the horizontal line is what the generalist is, lots of different things. And so what we talked about last uh, live stream on Thursday at uh, six was that if we use the, whoops, someone's calling me or something. Uh, no, I have that turned off. Uh, if we look at uh, the T-based Hold on. Someone's calling me from Illinois. How bizarre. I just put that on silent, but yet it's still making noise. How bizarre. Okay. Um, if we look at a T-based uh, marketer, T-based entrepreneur, what have you, that uh, gives us a really good idea of 
potentially the skill sets that we should acquire. And, and then we can plan and chart the course for how we're going to do that. Now, this past weekend, I gave a presentation for uh, James Von Ellswick and Nick Shackelford, two of the contributors to Steal Our Winners and two of like the most ninja uh, media buyers out there or agency owners or whatever you want to call them, performance marketers. And so they asked me to do a presentation on uh, how I learn and synthesize because they saw that as uh, they're friends of mine and they see that as one of my like superpowers. So that's what we're talking about here. And uh, because I wanted to spend more time preparing, uh, but I didn't get a chance for this one. So I apologize for that in advance. But what I did share last week that I will share this week again is that, um, you know, I do these live streams every Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesdays from two to four, Thursdays from six to eight. And uh, and my goal is to really tackle issues here and think out loud with you to figure things out with your help and for your benefit. And so these aren't things that like, you know, obviously I don't have if I'm going to maintain the schedule, which is my intention. I don't have 104 stock presentations. And even if I did the next year, I would not have 208. So uh, this is really, I come to these live streams with all the knowledge that I have, with all the expertise I have, uh, and want to kind of embrace a challenge or a problem and, and figure it out together. And so uh, I really appreciate each and every one of you for joining me and for participating because, you know, I'm, got, I'm here for you at the end of the day. I'm here to deliver value to you so much so that you are more likely to tune in again. And if you tune in enough times, then maybe long term down the future, like there's a fit for you to be a client of mine. If that never happens and I was at value to you, great. Uh, I'm, you know, I don't need to make money off of everybody, but I do want to contribute to as many people as I possibly can. And so that's why I'm here. And what I was mentioning last week as well was that that's where like ultimately, uh, we're going to be launching a podcast. And what I envision the podcast being is an interview based, uh, where I'm talking to experts, uh, a lot of which you probably will not have had the opportunity to listen to. They won't be like the, the podcast circuit people for the most part. Um, but it will be topical based on what we're into right now. So if I was doing the podcast right now, I'd be talking to people who are at the forefront of uh, neuroplasticity, like how you can actually grow your brain. Um, I would be talking to people uh, who are experts at learning for right now because that's what we're kind of breaking apart. So the idea is, is that like I do the pre-work here with you and we figure out what questions we want to ask these experts. What challenges can we not solve just you and I? And maybe when we get some expert guidance, someone who studied that one thing for the last 20 or 30 years, they might be able to bring something to the table. So I have a, an expansive Rolodex. You know, from everyone from Dan Ariely to Robert Cialdini to Jay Abraham, et cetera, right? And I will pull in people as necessary to solve the issues, solve the problems, right? So what we were talking about was T-based skill trees, right? But I thought before we got there, um, let's see who else has joined us. But then also I'm going to, I want to show you a couple pieces from the presentation I gave. And I also want to give you a couple of, what would be the right word? Um, give you a couple tastes of like certain elements of how I um, do what it is I do. And, and so, and uh, as always, uh, the more engaged you are, the more that you interact with me, uh, the more I can help you personally, but then also you're helping me. Right. So you're helping me anytime you, you know, you do an emoticon or you make a comment or you do a share because, you know, I want to expand my reach. I want to help as many people as I can. And the way Facebook judges whether this live stream is a good one or not is based on the things I just mentioned, the levels of engagement. 
So I appreciate each and every one of you that does the shares, the, the comments and everything else. And believe it or not, that's the first thing I look at when I'm done. So uh, let's see who else has joined us and then we'll get to it. Uh, okay, so we have Denise from, hey Denise, good seeing you again, from Massachusetts. We have Carlos. Uh, and Carlos, where are you? I forget. Um, but I know you're not in the U.S., I don't think, right? Uh, we got Logan. Wow, we got a great crowd today. We got uh, Pedro. Great questions, insights, rich Sheffern style. Cool. Uh, we got Andrew. Uh, good to see you, Andrew. United States patent. I guess you do something with patent law. Um, we got Juliana Lucy. Atir Roberts. Hello to you. Um, Ubdala. Right, Udala. Uh, thanks for the timing on Tuesdays. I can log in live on Tuesdays now. Awesome, cool. Uh, Lynn, you appreciate me. I appreciate you for saying that. Chris Vogelman is back in the building. Uh, not your typical podcast guest. No, that's the purpose, right? I want to be different. Better to be different than better, because uh, different is easier to notice than better. Uh, um, yep. One of my favorite topics too, Chris, uh, neuroplasticity, because it really shows that where you are today doesn't have to be where you are from a year from now, two years from now, in the future. And there are so many things that you can be doing to actually be better, right? Um, actually, I want to tell you about this one game that I started playing uh, that is really uh, humbling me quite a bit. Uh, so... Tasty Topics from the Mind of Rich Sheffer. And Sean, how's it going? Sean Brown and Gianna. Hey, good to see you. And uh, Gianni, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Carlos is in Venezuela. That's right. And hey, Mark Fitzpatrick. It has been a while. Hey, hey, my friend. And we got Ankit. That's a cool name, Anki. And uh, definitely appreciate you, Rich. Cool. Well, I appreciate all the positive comments. I, and, and I appreciate you being here because you have a choice. There are many things you could be doing right now, but you're here. And so I want to make sure that you never regret the time that you spend here. And just as a passing aside, like that's always been my MO. Um, and it's worked for me. So I, I pass that along to you that like when I wrote all the viral reports that I wrote back in 2006 and 2007, uh, each of those marketing reports were meant to shift a set of beliefs to then get someone to appreciate what I was going to release into the market soon thereafter. And that was the whole intention of writing the report, right? To shift certain beliefs so that my prospects would see what it is I'm offering the way I see it. And, uh, and so even though my intention with each of those reports was ultimately to make the maximum number of sales possible, my first and higher priority was that no matter like my goal, not that I necessarily fulfilled on this goal, but this was my goal, that whoever read one of my free reports, uh, whether they bought or not, would feel like they got enough value so that the next time I released a report, they would be willing to read that one. And by doing that, right, I was able to, well, on my first two reports alone, build a, a eight-figure business and then with no money spent on advertising and uh, really have an eight-figure business for many years with no advertising costs, primarily from the viral aspects. And when I look back at some of the things I'm most proud of, what I'm most proud of are some of those reports, right? The Internet Business Manifesto, the Attention Age Doctrines, the Maven Manifesto, the Entrepreneurial Emergency. Uh, all of these, I feel, uh, are some of the best work I've done uh, all ahead of their time and have all kind of proven to be true. So it kind of makes me proud. Uh, so, oh, whoops, I got Mark still on the screen. My bad. Um, all right. So, and for those who don't know, um, wow. And I think I got to like hunch over a little bit just for a little bit here so that you know that we have our, uh, Facebook group. So it's a free Facebook group. You can join a lot of heavy hitters in it. Um, we're always sharing ideas and answering questions and it's a great place to join. We it's free and, uh, there's quite a few, 
uh, tasty treats inside uh, from reports, from client reports I've written to presentations, etc. So, uh, hey, Luis is here from Mexico. Cool. Um, and a bunch more people. So I appreciate each and every. Wow, cool. We got another one. We got S. Ganopathy from Bangalore. And I need just read report on Desire's UVP as part of the STW. Absolutely amazed. Why didn't I get that earlier? As part of the, what do you mean by as part of the STW? Anyone have an idea of what, I mean, I know he's telling me something that I wrote, but I don't know what STW is. Steeler. I don't know. <laughs> uh, thanks for the compliment though. Uh, I picked up a lot from it. I can only hope someday to be a client. Me too, Don. But if you never do and you get value from these, then I'm okay with that. So, all right. So let's see. Where should we start? Um, let's, well, throw questions at me as it relates to what this topic is, right? And this topic was about really, um, what was it again? Uh, other than, you know, skill trees and what did I relabel this just so that it would be interesting? It was the fastest path to mastering marketing online and business growth. Okay, so uh, steal the winners. It's steal our winners. That's what was throwing me off on it. It's steal our winners. And for those of you who don't know, I just did like two interviews uh, in the last couple hours uh, for steal our winners. And both of them blew me away. One was with Maxwell Finn of Unicorn Innovations. One was with Scott Oldford of ROI and the ROI method. Both have contributed before and both of them contributed again because the feedback that we got from their contributions was fantastic. So, uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know Steal Our Winners, we're going to be raising the price. Uh, it's going to become a continuity program. Uh, but right now it's still insanely cheap. It's like 49 bucks for the year. And, uh, the, um, and I can give you a link to that too. So let me just put that down here. I'll put that below me right now. These are kind of both there. Okay. So that's there. This is here and we are good. Okay. And I'll take those off the screen in a bit, but, um, I'm debating where to start. And what I think I'll start is with some of the, um, what I'll start with is huh, some of the, uh, give you some of the outtakes of the presentation I did. Um, oh, well, I have to put this up. Um, yes, Chris, you're grandfathered in at that price. Well, you are if you buy the lifetime, because if you buy the lifetime, then you have it for a lifetime. Um, and SOW is amazing, best purchase ever. That's what my goal is to do. So, okay, so here's the deal. Um, I do want to get to the main premise of why we're here today, which was to really start to build out a skill tree for either an entrepreneur or to build out a skill tree for a marketer. And, you know, as I said, like, this is not necessarily something I've been doing for my whole life. In fact, like I just came across skill trees recently. And so I don't pretend to have like an expertise in this, but that's the point, right? We're going to figure it out together. We're going to figure out like, how can we be at our best? And I'm going to share with you what I already know, because I've done a lot of thinking about it and I've done a lot of studying about it. But so the first thing I want to do is I want to share some stuff that I've shared in the past, but I've shared it differently because it might make things a little bit easier. So I'm just going to give you a few brief uh, rundown on what I recently covered for Geek Out, which is uh, what James and Nick have put together. But I'm not going to do the whole presentation because I feel like that would be unfair to them. So uh, let's go to my computer here. And let's then make this full screen. All right, cool. Can you guys see that? Let me know if you can see that. Um, you should see geek out on your screen. You should see a picture of me, right? Our logo, that's James and Nick. All right, so, you know, here's my premise, right? And this was my premise for the presentation, but it's, my belief 
in all sincerity that uh, that we live in a very different world than we used to live in. We are surrounded by screens. We're surrounded by content. And ultimately, what that means is, is that we have uh, the amount of information that's coming at us is like a waterfall, right? Or it's like a fire hydrant. And we have this old way of looking at things, which we used to do. Anyone who was has been online f- for a long time uh, might remember like when you first started doing email, you would actually have all these folders and you'd move stuff from your inbox to all these folders. And I hope you still don't do that now because you could be spending an hour or two a day just taking information and putting them in the proper containers, right? We know, or buckets, and we no longer live in a world where that is really the ideal strategy, right? That we live in a world where, you know, it's a waterfall. You could say it's a stream, but I think it's a waterfall of information. And so what can you do? Well, you can just grab stuff as they come by based on what you know is what you're looking for because you've done the pre-thought that we're talking about here. So, uh, so that's kind of where this presentation goes. And, you know, my belief is, is that the more, the, that there's a correlation, if not a causation, and I think it's a causation, between uh, your brain power and your income. And that doesn't mean that the person with the highest IQ wins, but the person who knows how to think best about the situation, who sees the opportunities, who can leverage stuff, that's who wins, okay? And uh, all right, so, but I feel like most people I talk to these days are still using technology like this, right? Like it's antiquated. So you're behind, you're behind the curve, so to speak, in how you approach inputting information, synthesizing information, and therefore outputting information. And the net result of that is long term is that you're not going to perform at your very best. And I don't know if anyone's mentioned this, but do you see the slides? <laughs> uh, okay, Chris said yes. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So this is the bottom line. And this is my belief. And I hope it's yours too, that information is now the raw material of much of our daily reality. So that means that how you consume it, how you manage it, how you flow through your life, how you output it is now one of the most decisive elements in regards to your effectiveness. And if that's the case, and you really, if that, if you believe that to be true, if you don't believe that to be true, we could have an argument about that. But if you do believe that to be true, then have you given enough thought to how you interact with information from a standpoint of how do you maximize the payoff, right? How do you how do you interact with information in a strategic way? If being strategic is about getting the most amount of the output desired with the least amount of consumption of resources, right? How do you use the least to get the most, right? Or how do you use what's finite to get something so much more? Um, then you have to look at, are you really maximizing your interactions with information, which is pervasive? And let me know if that makes sense. Um, Like I said, I appreciate the feedback back and forth. So it's important to me because I'm going through an hour and a half presentation in in rapid speed. Uh, All right. So I'm going to just share some of my backstory because I think for some of you, you might find it hilarious or funny, but, um, but it's also just how things came to be. So I, uh, I've always, well, I haven't always been a, um, a, a, a voracious reader. I, you know, I almost failed at a high school. I, uh, that wasn't necessarily cause I could, I couldn't do well, but I just didn't go. Um, which is why I was hanging out with, you know, people from Goodfellas and stuff like that. But, um, but I had a new appreciation for learning after I got to college. And then after college, I became a voracious reader and, uh, and I highlighted a lot and I was very proud of all the books I read. And for whatever reason, even though I don't have a great memory, um, my, I do remember like where I came across an idea like in a book and where in the book it was and what side of the page for some reason. So, uh, so 
even though I just would highlight books, I could always go back to those books and find the highlight that I wanted. And one day I was going back in my library to, uh, this is an old picture of me from a video that I posted to YouTube about 10 years ago about how I read. And uh, one day I was in this library, uh, which is one of many in my house. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, and I went to get a book because I knew there was something in it that I wanted. And I went to the book and it was well over six months and I bought a cheap highlighter. And after six months, the highlight was gone and I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, I've read thousands of books. <laughs> um, I, if I not, if I don't get like, I'm not going to be able to, I mean, I have the knowledge, but I don't have all the knowledge and I spent all that time highlighting. I need that information. So I freaked out. I bought a Canon color double-sided scanner for like, I don't know, it was a lot of money back then. I bought that guillotine on the left and we hired an assistant in the Philippines and that became my process. I would read a book. I would highlight it. I would bring the book to the office and then uh, they would chop it, scan it send it to the Philippines, I would get it back as a Word document and a PDF document of just what I highlighted, and I would put those in binders. And this is the process of that. So I'll show you this. Uh, hopefully, let me know if you can hear this, like as soon as I press uh, play, so that I know whether this plays or not. Listen, and normally I would give this book to Janine, but um, she's busy typing right now, and I'm recording. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you, you what this? to the books once I bring them to the office. Uh, what we do is we actually rip the binders. So, any book that you see in my library, we haven't done this yet, too, but we've done it with literally thousands of books already. Okay, so now we have the book without the binding. Usually take off the first two pages. And now take off the end about the author and stuff because I don't really keep that stuff. And so now we're left with just this book, right? Now, I have to get up and show you where it goes. Okay, so we're right back. Okay, so now we're going to take this book and we're going to walk over here. I know it's choppy, I apologize, but at least you can and see it. Let's see if you can see what That's what I look like 10 years younger. Here, right here. This is a guillotine. And I'm going to turn the camera around so you can actually see it. All right, so now you can see the book here is in the guillotine, and what we're doing is basically getting ready to chop the glue off. Don't worry about the sound. Just watch what I'm doing. I'm chopping the binding off right there. Cut off that. I can actually even turn the sound the, off. Um, so you can... Yeah, so I'm chopping the binding off. That's the binding. And now you see, like, that's the book. It's highlighted. Now it will go over to the scanner, which generally I didn't do all this. Like someone did it for me. Um, the yeah, we used to have a software that did like created high speed audios, but um, and so now like that would be sent to the Philippines, and then from the Philippines I would get my um, I would get my highlights, right? And so that was that. And then what would happen with those highlights? Because this is pre, you know. Uh, iPad pre all that stuff. Um, all I did was put it in binders and then also put it in a folder so that when I was creating a course, I could search for a term in that folder and it would pull up any book that I read that mentioned that term. So I would be able to pull in lots of, uh, lots of information, right? But over the years, you have no idea how many binders I got. So this is 10 years later. This is like, uh, about, Five months ago, this is me in my um, in my in my library. That's also my garage. We have a three car garage. That's a complete library. It's just bookshelves after bookshelves, floor to ceiling. But around the perimeter are cabinets like this, full. By the way, like in the oh. old days, before I had my iPad, all my notes went into books like these, which were books of notes on the books that I've read or gone through or courses and these cabinets go all the way around so a ridiculous amount of notes i am a true info junkie um so but then uh maria andros she's married now so that's not her last name she bought me an ipad i never bought an ipad because like i had an iphone and i had a mac air and i just didn't understand what the hell would i use this device in between those for so i didn't buy it but i got one as a gift from maria andros and that totally changed my life and i'm serious it totally changed my life i'm going to explain why so, uh, so what happened was instead of just like putting it into a binder, I then 
put it, I found this app, which I'm going to tell you about called quick reader. And I would put it, I would turn the PDF into a EPUB with this app called Calibre. And then I would load it into quick reader. And I had taken, uh, let me go back to me for a second. I had taken, um, several, uh, speed reading courses before I went to college, um, maybe even in college. But the truth is, is like, unless I'm passionate about something, I'm not as disciplined as many of you might imagine me to be. And Matt will certainly confirm that. And I see that he's watched today. Um, the, uh, but so wait, why was I saying that? Um, so damn, I lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, so I loaded in, went into Quick Reader. Oh, okay, I took speed reading um, two classes, but I never learned to speed read because at the end of the day, it's a skill. And the only way that you improve that skill is by practice. And the only way you practice back then was to use your finger and go faster and then go faster and then go faster. And I just never did it. So it wasn't until I got this app, Quick Reader, that does that for you that all of a sudden... Uh, my life totally changed. And so, uh, actually I want to grab a, I want to grab a, um, if I have one here, where would it be? Um, I can show it to you and I'd like to show it to you what it looks like and everything else. But before I go any further, let me know if you have any questions of anything that I've covered so far. Um, oh, wow. Look at this. Yeah, this is important because I know we have some of you that might be in Mexico. A 10 point. Oh, okay. Oh, at 10:30 and 11:30. Wow. What kind of earthquake was that? I was in LA for the big earthquake in '94. I have a crazy story about that. Why not tell it to you? So it was 1994. Um. I was in Beverly Hills at the Four Seasons. And the earthquake happened on a Monday morning at 4 a.m. Oh, that's a big earthquake, a 7.4. Uh, the earthquake happened at 4 a.m. Monday morning. And I'd never been in an earthquake before. And this was the strongest earthquake that's ever happened in L.A., I think. It threw me out of bed. Uh, and then I watched all the Transformers, like, through my hotel window, exploding. And something came on the loudspeaker and they said, uh, come downstairs immediately, throw a bathrobe on, get downstairs now, right? So everybody is going down the steps, you know, downstairs. Well, it just so happens that Sunday night was the Ace Awards. So the hotel is chock full of celebrities. And now everyone's just like happy to be alive. Like we're all in the lobby in our bathrobes and I'm, talking to Harvey Keitel and Al Pacino. We're all in our bathrooms. It was hilarious. And um, and it was just pretty insane. And I will. I had a conversation with Mike Judd, who at the time was the creator of Beavis and Butthead, also did Silicon Valley. And uh, we had a wonderful conversation. Uh, part of it was about uh, Arthur Schopenhauer's philosophy. And that's where, like, you know, just learning shit has helped me in so many ways. Like, who would... He said something about Arthur Schopenhauer, and then we got into a whole conversation about that, that all truths uh, go through several stages. One, they're violently opposed. First, they're ridiculed, then they're violently opposed, and then ultimately they're taken as self-evident. And uh, the, so let me see if I can find, let me grab a wire. Um, and uh, let's see, do I have it? Yeah, I have the wire. It's right over there. Um it's okay if I disappear for one second, is it? I promise I'll be right back. Let's see, actually. Um, I wish I had another thing here. No, I don't. Okay, so let me just grab it. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. That wasn't very long, was it? Um, so, all right, so let's... Uh, so I've shown you so far um, what what my process was and how it worked and all that kind of stuff. Um, and now let's take it a little further. I'm going to go back to the presentation for a second and show you a little bit more. Okay. 
All right, so everything changed when I got an iPad because of Quick Reader and Calibre. Calibre turned my book notes into an EPUB, and the EPUB uh, then got loaded into Quick Reader. And you know, I didn't I didn't do this intentionally. Uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't do this intentionally, but um, but I believe that this process is actually ideal. And I'll explain why in a few minutes. But uh, let me kind of see if I can do this really quick. I want to see if I, when I open this, if I can, um, let's see, like what my camera choices are. What I have to, well, I'll find out in a second. All right, so, um, so this is the process, right? And this was the process that I did for quite a while. Um, this is Quick Reader. Right, and this was the app that really. Let me move me a little bit, maybe. How do I do that? Or make myself? I'm gonna get rid of. My, well, no. Uh, mm -mm. If I get rid of myself, I don't know how I'm gonna. Uh, where can I put this? I'll put this up here for now. Um, so, and let me get rid of the steal our winners thing for now. Not everything has to be commercial. There we go. So this was the app that sped up my reading process, Quick Reader. And why does it do that? Because you can tell it how much of a line you want to process it one in one flash and uh, and the speed that you want to go. You can also, like I do a half line in one view. Some people can do a whole line and some people can do several lines in one view. I have never really taken myself to that level. Uh, maybe one day I will. Um, but... Uh, but nonetheless, uh, that is uh, how Quick Reader works. Now, this is a video. I oh no. So I, I'm kind of surprised that there isn't a word, and maybe there is, and maybe you guys can tell me, um, for the effect of like when you're going really fast and then you slow down to a normal speed, how slow it feels. So we've all probably had the experience. Well, maybe not all, but most uh, of speeding on the highway, slowing down to the speed limit. And now the speed limit seeing like insanely slow because we're used to going fast. Right. And so my belief is, is that speed is relative. Like it's all relative to what you were experiencing before. And so when you go faster than you can go, when you slow down, uh, it seems slower than it actually is. And that's not only with driving. That's not only like when you're playing baseball and you put a heavier bat, you know, you put weights on your bat and then you swing and then you take the heavy weights off and it seems so light, right? That's not really speed, that's weight. But there's this, it's everything's relative. And with listening and watching, your brain adapts really, really fast. So like right now, if you can only uh, listen at 150% or 200%, and let's say you can't like you listen to 150 percent you understand you go to 200 percent it's too fast if you go to um 250 percent or 300 percent and you listen for a few minutes and then you back it down you'll actually be able to understand it same with watching it happens very fast and uh i've been audio listening at a high speed since before the internet like there used to be a uh variable speed variable pitch uh tape player that Radio Shack sold, I had one of those and I would listen to everything high speed. And now let me tell you why I, well, I'll tell you in a second why I listen to everything high speed and why I read high speed. And there's a very good reason for that. But when I was reading, this is like the process that I would go through. I would get on my elliptical, look at the, look at, open up a uh, quick reader. And then I would review my highlights at twice the f speed that I normally could read. And then I would do it at four times the speed, then at six times the speed. And then I would do it at one and a half the speed I'm normal, like I'm used to. And I would find I'd be able to do that. And I just kept doing it, doing it, doing it day in, day out. And um, I'll get to why this process is so superior in a second, but, uh, but let's keep going. So this is the video and I want to just see if I can actually just show you myself because I think it would be better. So let me go back to here. Yeah. Okay, cool. So here's my iPad. Uh, very cool. So here are books. Here's Quick Reader. Okay, so I don't know what speed I have it at right now. 2,000 words a minute. Okay, so this is 2,000 words a minute. I don't know what book this is. This is Made to Stick. 
why some ideas right uh, survive while others die. So this is 2,000 words a minute. This is the speed that I read at these days. And once again, these are what I highlighted, right? Now, I tend to over-highlight. Um, now, that's 2,000. When I first started, I could only read it about 400 words a minute. I'm going to move it to 3,000 approximately. That's good enough. This is 3,000. Now, what, what's the benefit of me looking at it at 3,000 if I can't comprehend it? Because I'm training my eyes to be able to move that fast. And then this is 4,000. And once again, I don't, I don't read at 4,000 these days. Although I think if I kept practicing and practicing and practicing, maybe I'd be able to at some point. This is 4,000. But I would go through this just training my eyes to move that fast. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, let's proceed, right? Like, let's go back to, um, the computer. Oh, we don't want to do that. So let me get rid of, let me go back to, hold on a second. I'm all confused. All right, there we go. Uh, there. Now go back to here. Okay. So, uh, what's this? Yeah, everything seems slow after going fast uh, for a few minutes. All right, so maybe you guys have seen this. Uh, according to research at Cambridge University, it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are. The only important thing is that the first and last letter be in the right place. The rest can be a total mess, and you can still read it without a problem. This is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. And there was a time, though, when you did read every letter. And now you don't have to sound out every letter to know the word. You recognize the word. What I'm telling you is, is that with practice, you can look at blocks of words, and it's the same thing. It's the very same thing. Uh, that's my killer combo right there. And uh, it's, you know, why do I have an oxygen machine? You might be wondering. Well, Jay Abraham sent me an oxygen machine as a gift one day. Um, you know, I've sent him gifts. He sends me gifts. Um, and he sent it to me because he was using it during a Q&A call and it really made a difference for him. And he thought I should try it. I didn't want to try it because I just felt like I'd be too much of a freak. But I wanted to figure out what the hell am I going to do with an oxygen machine. And so I use it when I work out. It's called EWAT therapy. E e -watt. It's called exercise with oxygen therapy, and um, it allows me to push harder for longer, and I don't, I dig it, and it makes me weird, and I like being weird. Um, so next came, though, after I like started doing that, right, after I started to uh, speed read the highlights. Now, a couple things about speed reading, just so that I make sure I cover it. Uh, one, there's three things that get in the way, subvocalization, regression. And um, subvocalization, regression, and there's a third one. Damn it. Um, well, let's talk about subvocalization. Subvocalization is the need for you to hear the word to understand it, right? So right now you see, hear, understand. And what you have to learn to do is see, understand. And uh, what prevents you from doing that is subvocalization. One of the easiest ways to get over subvocalization is either A, chew gum. Why I'm always chewing gum, uh, or B, put a pen in your mouth. You can't do it if you got a pen in your mouth. Uh, and C, listen to music. I do all of them. Well, I don't put the pencil in my mouth, but I do the other two. And uh, and then the other thing though that will interfere with your ability is the need to comprehend. You will not be able to comprehend in the beginning and you have to be okay with that. You have to push through that. The But the beautiful part is, is that when you're reviewing like what I'm doing, my notes, one, I'm already somewhat familiar with it. I don't worry about getting it. I know it or I've been exposed to it. But then also... It's there for me. So it's not like I'm, I'm not reading this so that I can get some immediate benefit right now. So I'm okay with not comprehending. And that's the only way that you'll ever get fast is if you're willing to go faster than you comprehend, do it on a consistent enough basis with reading. With the other two, you can do it right away. But with reading, if you're willing to do that, you will see insane results. And like for me, right, um, 
here's like the step back. And this is probably, for many of you, this might be the most important thing I say today. And for some of you, it could be even the most important thing I said in all these live streams. Okay. Um, people who know me know that like I tend to like Zoom calls as oppo- or FaceTime calls as opposed to telephone calls. And the reason for that is that I've got ADD and it's there. And if I'm talking to someone on the phone, like odds are I'm picking up stuff, I'm looking at it, you know, like, and I'm, and I'm not fully present in the phone conversation. So with Zoom, like I'm forced to because I'm looking at the person. Uh, the reason that I first bought that variable pitch, variable speed cassette player at Radio Shack was one simple reason. I can't pay attention at regular speed. Like I can pay attention, but like I keep getting distracted, right? And so what I found was this, that the faster I went, the more I needed to pay attention. And I could take it to a speed where literally I was forced to pay attention because I would lose it immediately if I wasn't. And there is a strong relationship between the amount of attention you're placing on something when you're looking at it and studying it and your ability to recall it and its ability to get in. So by speeding up, I was forcing myself to pay more attention. And then because I was paying more attention, it was locking in more, right? There's two things that help with uh, locking shit in and it's attention and intention. Attention, the more attention you're focused on it, the more the likelihood is that you will recall it and you will build through neuroplasticity, you'll build the connections, right? But the other thing is intention. And there was a great book, I think it was either The Talent Code or The Talent Myth, that talks about like someone who practices the piano for three hours a day who doesn't think they'll ever be a piano player versus someone who practices an hour a day who thinks they're going to be a piano player. The one who practices an hour a day is going to build more myelin sheath around their synapses or and the or dendrites or whichever the thing is um chris would know uh the because like your you your brain knows that this is more important to you and so when the insulation is on those uh nerve cells um it, the speed can go through faster like a wire like the more it's protected and so attention intention are the two critical areas now uh i'm going to go through a little bit more here. So, so the next thing was to take that audio, take the book notes, right? Those highlights. And now not just speed read it, but then also turn it into an audio, into a uh, audio book from Apple's perspective. So now I could listen to that. I would record it and say it at 400 words a minute because that's the fastest it goes. And then by making it a book in, uh, on my iPhone, I could then go to 800 words a minute. And 800 words a minute is pretty damn fast. I'm going to play some stuff for you at 400 words so you can get a sense of it. Um, the next, though, so these are just, like, I wanted to show you this. These are, this is just, you know, one of, I could show you a gazillion screens. These are all my notes on audio, right? So everything from, like, Ready, Fire, Aim, which my mentor, Michael Masterson, wrote, to Build Your Own Guthrie by Dan Penna, uh, you know, Etc. Right. So just there, I, I have all these notes on my iPhone, right? So I can just review, uh, uh, everything that I've ever been exposed to if I want it. And, um, and so, yes, uh, someone just asked just so that I make sure no one gets lost. What's the name of the app to turn a PDF into an EPUB Calibre. It's a free app. C-A-L, well, ca and libre, like the Spanish word for book. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, Then I figured out that I could get books uh, in PDF format from this place, Library Genesis, libgen.bpw. I'm not going to spend any time on that. Um, But when I got books in a PDF format or when I figured out how to unlock the DRM of a Kindle book, which we're not going to go into, but I would buy books on Kindle, then break it um, and not break it, but break the protection so I could turn it into a PDF so I could put it into Goodreader so that I could read it in Goodreader so that I could highlight and now not have to send it to the Philippines. Right. And so this is how I do all my reading for the most part. When I'm highlighting, it's in Goodreader. Right. Um, so that got rid of the chopping and scanning, which was kind of cool. 
And so now I'm reading it in Goodreader. I'm then taking the notes and it's turning into an ebook. I'm taking the notes. It's turning into an audio book and I'm taking the notes and I'm putting it in a folder on my desktop, not on my desktop, but in my Dropbox so that I have every, I have access to every book that I've ever read. And there's a few close friends and clients that have access to that folder. So like Russell Brunson has access to my book notes and gets updates every time I'm updating it, right? Which is pretty much every week I'm adding more books. Uh, then I found another great app and this one is voice dream. So voice dream, what it does, it reads the book to you, but it also paces like, you know, like what I was saying with quick reader. So I find, well, the fastest it goes is 700 words a minute and at 700 words a minute, it, excuse me, um, you can cover like a best-selling hardcover 250 page book in less in about two hours a little less but about two hours and so that became a new thing for me and so now i'm going to kind of walk you through what the process is right oh i wanted to show you this let's see if i can show you quick reader on this now i mean voice stream so let me go here all right let me actually first take you to uh this then back to my iPad. Is this useful or should I just get to the skill trees? I, I assume that you guys are like kind of interested in this. Um, let me know. Uh, cause I'm here for you guys. So like, I'm excited by this stuff. Cause like, I just, I'm, I'm proud of it. And it's all stuff that like I did haphazardly that all like, when I look back at it, I'm like, damn, this is all really smart, but it wasn't, it wasn't like that. It just like looks good in hindsight. Um, all right. So this is voice dream. And, um, so many of these books I've already read, actually all these ones that I'm looking here are book notes of books I've read. So, oh, I guess I just, because I loaded them in, but like, uh, so let's see, I'm just going to pull any book, uh, but I might as well pull a book. That's like something I am interested in. Okay, cool. Very interested. Okay, cool. Um, so all right, so like, let's say, because I know I read this one recently, here's the Elon Musk book, okay? And so this is good. Okay, so um, I'm gonna show you here what, how voice stream works. Okay, there we go. All right, so here it goes. Hopefully you can hear this. Let's see if you do. No, it doesn't look like you can. No, so you can't hear it, but right now it's reading to you. So actually what I'll do is I'll go back to the actual, uh, I'll go back to the, um, the screen that I had. All right. So you're not really going to be able to hear this. Well, I get it. Um, but hopefully, uh, you get something out of this. So you can, and once again, like when you listen, well, not once again, when you listen to something with headphones, it sounds very different than when you're listening without headphones, the comprehend, your comprehension goes way up. So that's what voice stream sounds like at about 700 words a minute. This is voice stream, right? And then next, uh, the next thing I added was to put my book notes in Evernote. And the way I put my book notes in Evernote, at first I used to send myself like all of the highlights through Goodreader but there were all these extra annotations on all the highlights. So it became a real pain in the ass to um, get it so that it would work the way, like without me having to do a tremendous amount of editing. But then I found this great uh, uh, online uh, app called Some Notes, and you upload a PDF that you've highlighted and immediately can download everything that you have uh, highlighted. And so without having, you know, without the annotations and stuff. So then that became the easiest way for me to create my highlights, my book notes, my, you know, my, um, my audio, my, my Evernote note, etc. Okay. So this is what would happen, right? So now I would get a PDF 
from or an EPUB from Libgen or I would buy it on Amazon and then crack it and then I would put it into voice stream and I'd go through the first pass. Now next, that's where like generally most books now go through this. And then I ask myself whether it's worth highlighting. Like so for example, the Elon Musk book, not really worth highlighting because like it was his autobiography and I can I don't need to highlight to recognize like what I learned about Elon that I would like to incorporate into my own being. And so it never, like, I did that. That was it. Now I wrote some notes on it, and I will not, that book is now served its purpose, right? But like most books, uh, yeah, I'd say like about, about 70%, 60 to 70% of the books I read through uh, Voice Dream end up going further. And so going further means now I take that book and I put it into Goodreader and now I read it at about a thousand words a minute, uh, but it's probably slower than that when you take in all the highlights. So, um, so I'm reading it, but I'm reading it again now and understand this, right? Like, I don't know how long it takes you to go through a book, but I've gone through the book once through voice stream, right? And when I was in voice stream, I can tell you that like my attention is locked on because that's what I'm doing when I'm on the elliptical these days. I'm, wa- I'm listening to the book and I'm watching it and I'm paying complete attention. And I know that it's the highest level of attention for me because even when I'm watching a movie, I do not lose track of time like when I'm speed reading on the elliptical. So if I'm watching a movie on my elliptical, time goes by slower than if I'm reading. And so I read on the elliptical and that's what I'm using quick reader for. I mean, voice stream for it. Now, every once in a while I go back to quick reader just so that I keep my speed at the same level. Um, but mostly I'm doing voice stream these days and I need, I've made a more concerted effort recently to use quick reader more because I started to notice that my ability to go as fast was starting to slow. But so then I, after voice stream, I put it into good reader. I read it. I highlight it. It then goes into some notes. I then, uh, extract the highlights. Those highlights then go to the audio, go to the Word doc in my Dropbox and PDF in my Dropbox. Then it goes into to uh, Quick Reader, right, to do the speed reading on it. And then it goes into Evernote. And then I took this wonderful course by Tiago Fort, uh, Build Your build a Second Brain. And that really taught me how to process the notes better. So uh, this is what I learned from Tiago. Everything in my life now goes into uh, Evernote. Now, a lot of this stuff goes in and gets deleted, right? But any email I plan on reading, like a long email, like so something I've subscribed to by somebody I like, I don't even read it. It, go, it automatically forwards into Evernote. And then I'll go into Evernote, delete what I don't like, but whatever I do like, right? Whether it's from Pocket, email, voice memo, good reader, Google Docs, or Word, uh, a web browser, Feedly, handwritten notes, notes that I took on my any of my iOS devices, Pocket, Dropbox, podcastnotes.org, which I love, and or any of my other uh, devices, all goes into Evernote. And then it gets processed in Evernote. And it will either get deleted because it's not something long-term I want for, I need or see any use for, or it is something useful. And then I start this, what's called progressive summarization, which I learned from Tiago. And here's my process with it, and I'm refining it. But the first time I read it, I am already starting to bold, right? So I bold the first time through, I'm bolding anything that's important. The second time through, I am looking at only what's bolded and then highlighting what I believe is even more important than that. Then the third time through, and not all do I go this through, it's only if I'm using it and I like come across this note or it's something related to a project that I'm working on, um, then I take all the things I highlighted and I move them to the top so that like I copy and paste it, right? So now I have an outline of every most important thought that's in that note or in that book. And then from there, I write. And so it's all set up for me to basically write the next thing I want with everything already extracted. And I think uh, Milos told me that this resonated with him last week when I was talking about it, that um, we don't make the best choices often in life. We make the easiest choices. And so I want to set up my future self to win. And if you've read Thinking Fast, 
Thinking Slow by Daniel Kennerman, then you know that we have these two systems of thought, System 1, System 2. System 1, we spend like 90 to 95% of our time on. It's really our gut instinct. It's thinking without thinking. And then System 2 is hardcore, heavy-duty thinking, uh, which we don't spend as much time in because it's hard work. You know, the brain is 2% of our body weight, but it is 20% of our energy consumption. And so we tend to avoid deep thought when we can. That's why we build habits. That's why we, there's heuristics, all these kinds of things. So I use system two today, forcing myself to like make these notes and all that so that in the future, system one can benefit because system one can just look at this note and see what this is completely about. Make sense? Um, so next, uh, those are the two systems. System one, um, okay. Oh, subvocalization, regression, mind wandering. Well, mind wandering obviously doesn't apply if you have to be so focused on it, right? And those are the suggestions I said, chew gum, pencil, and mouth, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is all what it's about with speed reading. Can you go from see, hear, understand to see, understand? And you don't have to say stop to yourself when you see a stop sign. And so there is hope for each and every one of us. Um, but that big obstacle is, are you willing to do it without comprehending it? Because it seems like a colossal waste of time in the beginning. I was getting on this elliptical machine. The only benefit was, is that I'm getting on the elliptical machine anyway. So like, but I don't think I would have had the discipline to sit down for an hour a day and practice, but I'm on the elliptical machine and I lose track of time, even just trying to watch the speed. And these are books I've read. So I am getting a little bit of a gist and, but I was okay, not comprehending. Anything worth doing well is worth doing really shitty at first because that's the only way you get to be able to do something well. So here's why I believe this works so well. One, you're getting daily discipline practice if you incorporate it into something like what I did, which is the way I exercise. So now I killed two birds with one stone. Like if I don't exercise in the morning, that means I also don't read. If I don't read in the morning, it means I don't exercise. So like there's even more of an incentive for me to read. Um, material's already familiar because I'm doing it with my book notes, right? Uh, this is so that you get good. You don't have to keep to do this, but this is like the process, right? Uh, there's no pressure to comprehend one because I've already read the book. I already have the book notes, but also like I've already, like if I learn it, I don't learn it. It's not a big deal. Uh, it forces you to pay complete attention because like it's going faster than you can comprehend, right? You're locking in what you've read from space repetition, right? So I use, I'm using voice stream. That's the first time I've gone through the whole book. The next time I'm going through the whole book, I'm reading good reader. Once again, now that's the second time I've now gone through that book. Now the third time is like when it's in Evernote and I'm looking at all my highlights and I'm bolding and highlighting. I also have, I can listen to it anytime I want. Sometimes when I'm falling asleep, I'll listen to the book like that night. Um, and then, uh, what's the other way? Cause there's another way too. Oh, and then quick reader. Right. Then I'm also reviewing the book in quick reader. So in the amount of time that your slow reading has you read the book once, I've probably gone through that book like 10 times. And that's the difference. Right. So uh, you're locking in through space repetition. You're consistently pushing yourself to go faster. Um, long term review of all that you've marked important in every book. And then you can go deeper topic dives at high speed for important days. So like there might be days where like I'm going to be looking at copy all day. Well, for me, I can review every single copywriting book and about 2000 words a minute and go through like 20 books during my one hour reading session. Right. So I can review breakthrough advertising, my life in advertising, scientific advertising, you know, uh, et cetera. Right. I don't need to list them all. But, and then that would gear me up. That would prime my brain because I've read all those books, but now I'm being reminded of all that stuff before I sit down and look at copy that day. All right. 75% uh, of what you get exposed to is forgotten in 24 hours. Um, this is why, like when we were talking last week about Anki and Super Memo, these uh, algorithmic uh, review processes that like make index cards and you review them. And if you get it right easily, then you don't review that for quite a bit of time. And if you struggle with it or get it wrong, you're reviewing it more frequently and it's optimizing how often you should see something. And it's really important. There are two things about learning that I think most people miscomprehend. One is, is that learning is not, well, I think it's in here. So let me hold off on that. Okay. But with space repetition, right. And here it is for me, uh, the first time through, I went through in voice dream. The second time through, I'm doing it through Goodreader. The third time through, I'm doing it 
or review second, right? Third time, Evernote. And then the next quick reader, audio highlights, progressive summarization. This is why without even being disciplined, I can accumulate and lock in so much information because the process just does that for me. Um, this is from Tiago. And it's basically what I want you to think of my Evernote. My Evernote is my intellectual capital or my knowledge capital. Everything I consume is in there. That I, And then it's isolated as to what's important, what I believe is valuable. And so I have this Evernote system that is full of every good idea I've been exposed to. And I'm in the idea business. Right. As a thought leader, if that's what you want to call me or guru or coach or whatever. Right. Like I'm in the business of thinking for people and I make my money off ideas and I can come up with a lot more ideas by bouncing off the good ideas I've been exposed to than sitting in a room by myself looking at a blank screen. And so. I have this insanely valuable resource that's getting made just by me doing what I'm doing, right? And this is so superior than just taking my notes and putting them in that uh, that folder in Dropbox, even though I still do that, because like it's forcing me to really get in there and make decisions about what's most important. And then the things that are the, the cream of the cream, I'm now rewriting in my own words because it's like step four was after consolidation, right, is writing. And then step five is wisdom notes, which is my highest level of like, I'm going to take notes on this whole big topic now of everything that I've taken in and now summarize it all like at the highest level. I hope that makes sense. Uh, let me know if you're still with me or if I scared the shit out of each and every one of you. Um, I talked about this attention intention, right? These are the two things that really lock in stuff. Uh, the faster I input, the more I pay attention, the more I pay attention, the more I learn. It's a, it's a positive spiral up. Um, so this is where like now we're getting to what it was that we were supposed to cover today and only a hour and 11 minutes in. Sorry about this, guys. Uh, so what are you trying to optimize your brain for? Um, uh, Milos asked, uh, can I talk more about wisdom notes? Uh, remind me next time, Milos, and I'll go into it, okay? Uh, all right, so what do you want to optimize your brain for? Like I've already just explained to you, right, that I make my money with ideas. And like, you know, I just, like Agora, Agora is a company that looks for big ideas and I make my money with big ideas. So don't I want to optimize my brain to come up with as many like wonderful ideas as possible? And if I do want to do that, is that going to be different than maybe a copywriter who might want to optimize their brain for uh, big ideas, but then also persuasive ideas? And maybe if you're the leader of a business, maybe you want to optimize your brain for leadership and getting the most out of employees and spotting the future of where you want to take your business. So just because we're going to work on our brain doesn't mean we're all going to do the same thing. We need to know what it is that we're trying to do in life, what our future self needs us to do today to give us the biggest advantage tomorrow. And this is where skill trees come in. This is where being T-based, uh, T-shaped, um, comes in because if you don't, then what's the point? Like I remember being younger and I would read these self-help books and I would never do any of the exercises. It was intellectual entertainment at the end of the day. Don't regret it. I enjoyed it, but I, I didn't really improve myself. And so if you're going to spend the time, right, to do all this, don't you think you should know what the end goal is? Like what do you want to be better at? I don't see like in most people's thinking or courses even about this stuff that they don't recognize that like how I need to use my brain is different than how you need to use your brain. And that's based on who we want to be and what goals we want to achieve. And so it doesn't make sense that we would go about learning the same way. We might use similar processes, but what we decide to learn, what we decide to study, what skills we decide to incorporate, not the same. All right. Uh, all right. So we're here. Let's just see. Uh, hold on. Do, 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 do. 
So make your future self proud. This is something that we've talked about. This is from Danny Forrest. He's the first guy that I at least heard of skill trees from. Uh, so props to him. I try not to take credit for stuff that isn't mine. And uh, so this is a skill tree that he developed on becoming more charismatic. It is a skill. And so uh, here is his skill tree. And he says he's become much more charismatic and he, there's been an effect. Here is someone else's, right? And this was actually an animation. So I'll just show you. Um, it was another one that I just found online. So I, uh, but can you see that? What do you see on screen right now? Oh, you only see the side. Yeah, that's right. Okay, forget that. I don't know why that does that. Okay, I have to talk to them about that. But anyway, so this is a woman who's, uh, that's her. And I, this is just the lower left-hand corner. And like, she's good at 2D design, right? The, the number of yellow dots, I think, shows her proficiency. Right? Like, she's really good at this. Like, she's awesome at Excel. She's good at Photoshop, Illustrator. But she's not yet taken up 3D design, uh, nor does she use, like, any of the productivity tools that I'm talking about. And so this is part of her skill tree. And it's, like I said, I don't know her. Uh, she might be very upset that I found on Google Images her skill tree. But maybe she shouldn't have posted it if she didn't want me to talk about it. So, okay. So here's a specific example. I'm not a copywriter, but I have written some sales letters that have done insanely well. And one of the things that uh, when we're talking about a skill tree, it's about identifying what is it that, um, oh, wow, I'm seeing a, uh, a danger mark for system audio. I'll have to figure out what that is later. Um, what is missing in your skill to like every skill is made up of sub skills, right? So I just like came up with this off the top of my head. Like what, are, what if there, if I had had a copywriting skill tree, what would be included? Right. And the, you know, salesmanship in print, the structure of a sales letter, how to turn features into benefits and benefits of those benefits, the lead, doing a false close, problem solution, sort sentences. Like, and you know, you might have other things that you would put in here. But for me, the two biggest obstacles for me writing copy was not that I didn't understand it because I understood it pretty well. I mean, some of the world's best copywriters are my friends, but I didn't have the rhythm down and the vocab down, right? Like my my vocabulary is very large, right? As far as what I can understand because I read so much, but my working vocabulary is somewhat stunted. And because of that, um, a lot of times I'm grasping for words. Excuse me. Um, so, so like, this is what's missing from my skill set. So what do you think I did? I created audio versions of sales letters because like um i read the advice to get the vocab and get the rhythm copy the, the best sales letters out by hand well i did that for like two hours once and i was like this is the most inefficient way to lock it in i get that i would and if i was going to be a professional copywriter i'd probably do it but i'm not and i won't so what's the next best alternative and so what i decided was is that well I can, when I listen to music, I can understand, I can remember all the words. So why don't I do that with copy? Why don't I listen to copy over and over again of the sales letters I really like? And what I found was that if I listen in high speed over and over again, I can very quickly actually, if I listen to it for a few hours, like over the course of a couple of days, I can then kind of take that tone in, uh, the way that I write. So what, and for anyone who really wants to kind of like think about it, um, I was listening to the audio that I'm about to play for you pretty often when I wrote The Hidden Obstacles to Success. So even though The Hidden Obstacles was a client report, it's not really copy. I do like to write, I like to write in a way that people don't find painful to read and that kind of pulls them through, right? So, uh, I can I can see in my writing of the Hidden Obstacles report uh, the influence that this had. So hopefully I can play it. I'm going to try right now. This is Dan Kennedy's uh, Wealth Attraction uh, sales letter for his home study course. And we'll listen to a minute or two of it. Um, here it is. 
Warning, this could be the most important information you will ever read about wealth attraction and creating gigantic financial breakthroughs nearly overnight. Discover the little-known and never-talked-about success philosophies, beliefs, thinking, and personal behaviors that allow millionaire and multimillionaire entrepreneurs to attract maximum money and create maximum wealth in record time. If you could change just a few things you think, change a few things about the way you do business, just a few, and suddenly experience a lifting of stress, struggle, anxiety, frustration, and uncertainty, accompanied by a much multiplied influx of cash, a much multiplied influence with others, and accelerated accomplishment of your goals, would you want to at least experiment with those changes? Dear friend, this letter is your invitation to get the at-home version of my one-time-only wealth seminar that I recently conducted on audio or on audio and video tape. And there are reasons you should do that and do it now. And I don't know if you guys hear this. Time with these materials that transcend the work I'm typically known for. Yes, this is a sales letter. And in this letter, I want to do my level best to convince you to take this action. Here are the things that you must agree are true. One, you are exposed to truly new and different ideas and information. Two, you are made uncomfortable and forced to confront issues you typically never think about. Three, you wind up with a different understanding of what being entrepreneurial is all about. Four, you are affected on an emotional, not just an intellectual level. Five, you select very specific actions to take, changes to make, and strategies to try. Six, I reveal to you a profound, important truth about a severe flaw that exists in the vast majority of business, undoubtedly including yours, that you will choose to make fixing a top priority. Seven. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, that was, you know, the sales letter for Dan Kennedy's uh, Wealth Attraction Boot Camp Home Study, right? And I read it regular speed, just like read it, and then sped it up. And I can listen to that. I don't, I don't know how long that is. I don't. You see, you can t see 200%, 200%. Some are a little bit faster. Some are a little bit slower. Um, but uh, and I have a lot of these. These are just some of them. But uh, Wait, you lost audio? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, good. Um, so, so that is uh, what I call audio copy. But what's important is for you to understand that, like, that was the hole in my skill set. That the hole was that, like, when I want to say something's great, I only use the word great. Like I don't have 20 other like words for great. I don't have, um, you know, as many words as like when I read Clayton Makepeace's copy, like I was always just so blown away at his word choices. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of Clayton's stuff that I committed to uh, audio as well. Um, all right. So uh, let's go back to this and... Uh, we're going to get to what we're here for. Okay, that's the T-Base. We've already covered that. Uh, we don't need to go into that. Uh, here's a picture of just some of my journals. Uh, as you can see, it started in April. My very first entry, April 29th, 1996. Whew. 24 years ago. Holy fuck. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, there. That's the... Uh, all right. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, let me just make sure there's not anything else. Uh, so this is like, I try to reduce the amount of choices uh, as much as possible. So uh, no surprise that in that video that I showed you from 10 years ago, I was wearing what I'm wearing now, a black t-shirt. There's me in 1995, black t-shirt with jeans, 2012 with Todd Brown, black t-shirt and jeans, 2014 on stage, black t-shirt and jeans, me with Andy Jenkins before he passed away in 2016, Black t-shirt, jeans, here's me on stage in Japan, black t-shirt and jeans, here's with my dad before he passed away, black t-shirt and jeans, here's me with Jay Abraham in 2012, black t-shirt and jeans, here's me with Mark Ford, black t-shirt and jeans, here's me with Bill Bonner, black t-shirt and jeans, here's me with Steve Forbes, black t-shirt and jeans. Why? Because I, that's all I wear. And it makes it really easy for me when I go shopping. And it makes it really easy for me when I wake up in the morning to decide what I'm going to wear. No friction, right? What I want to do is because I know that my future self is going to make the easy choice, not the best choice, I'm going to take every best choice and I'm going to figure out a way to make it the easy choice. And I'm going to take all the wrong choices and I'm going to add more friction. So, yeah, well, Chris said the jeans get darker though. Well, my size goes up and down too. So, like, sometimes I have to get new jeans. But the... But, uh, and also style, right? Um, but, uh, well, and you know, the truth of the matter is I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go to black t-shirt and jeans because I wanted to reduce the amount of decisions I made. Although long-term I'm very happy I did. Um, I got compliments on how I looked with a black t-shirt and jeans. It's the only time I would get compliments. So I figured, well, if this is the only time that people are com complimenting me that I look good, well, I might as well just wear this because why not? 
Um, so, yeah, so, like, the easy example I always give people is, is that, like, if, because this is not even my example, but it, it just so is easy to understand. If you have this bad habit of every time you get home from work at 5 p.m., you turn on the television and then you just, like, go into a coma, um, then... What you want to do is you want to make that decision just a little bit harder. So maybe you take the batteries out of the remote control and you put them in the kitchen just so that you have to do more to then distract yourself. Like Ivaldo, who's one of the best, if not the best copywriter at Agora, um, he leaves his cell phone upstairs uh, when he goes to, when he goes to write downstairs so that like his phone's upstairs, it's too much of a distraction. It's too much of a hassle to go upstairs. Whereas if the phone was right next to him, it would be too easy. So how do you make the right decision the easy decision? And how do you make the wrong decision more difficult? Not impossible, but more difficult. And that's all a question of friction. And that's why I think friction is one of the, like the unappreciated forces in the universe. Because friction is the way that you can get yourself to... Uh, um, you can get yourself to take the right action even when... Uh, it's not the easiest action because you've made it the easiest action. Um, <laughs> uh, easy uniform. Uh, is this like a Steve Jobs wardrobe move? It kind of is. Although like, look, I've been doing it since the nineties. Um, so I was wearing a black t-shirt. The very first computer I owned was a Vic 20, but then the next bunch of computers I owned were all apples I had an se30 it was 30 megahertz in college right and um and then after I graduated college I switched to pcs not because I liked pcs but because I thought apple was going to go out of business now at that time I was already wearing a black t-shirt and one of the like and the guy that I saw do it first and I don't remember now even if it was white t-shirts or black t-shirts I think it might have been white t-shirts but um you know when I had my store, all the famous designers shopped in my store because we had half the clothes were used from all around the world. And most of our used clothing was not in the rest of the United States because we imported it a lot from Europe. And so um, Dolce & Gabbana used to shop in the store all, a lot, like so much so that they would notice when my weight went up and down. And uh, Giorgio Armani shopped in the store and Calvin Klein shopped in the store. And Giorgio Armani uh, also, I think he did it way before Steve Jobs. A lot of designers do that. A lot of designers will wear jeans and a white t-shirt, right? Classic, but like this way, I don't know why, but anyway. Um, so uh, let's see here. Let's see, is there anything else? Oh, yeah, so much so just that uh, this is my team back in 2011 and Halloween and they all dressed like me uh, and they all have cigars because I smoke cigars. Uh, learning is holistic uh, and learning is not the storage of information. It's about making connections, creating connections with what you already know and what you need to know with what you're learning now right? Your brain is making connections. And like an idea is not a synapse. An idea is a bunch of synapses. Um, and the learning is about relating information, which is why metaphors, similes are so powerful. I had this long conversation once with uh, Robert Cialdini, where I asked him, I, I said, if you were forced, would you like to pick the most powerful way to, uh, the most efficient and powerful way to persuade would you say that it's metaphors and similes and because i was studying them at the time and i we were doing a we were speaking at the same of that and i did interviewed him many times before and he was like he's like yeah i would say that is the most efficient way because you're leveraging what they already know to persuade them into what you want and um so that and and that's why a metaphor is a pre-built in relationship connection. This is like that, right? And so because of that, that's why it's so powerful. And you should understand that like you don't learn by just rote. That's not, that's like memorization, but that's not learning. Like what's learning is this is like that. This is not like that. This is like you have to relate what it is you're being exposed to, to what you already know or what you will be doing or to something that then kind of like makes connections in the brain. All right, uh, let's see. Oh, and then these are nootropics. We'll save that for another day. 
what are all the crazy chemicals I put in my body? <laughs> oh, God. I, you know, I just want to thank you all for listening to my craziness. Um, I know that I'm a freak. Uh, and hopefully in a good way. Um, let me save that. Uh, and the fact that you guys are here listening to me just makes it so that I'm not sitting here talking to myself. Um, I appreciate it. And I hope that you're getting value out of this. Um, and if so, then fantastic. Uh, I just also, I wanted to play a quick thing for you for what my book notes sound like, right? Because I'm not reading my book notes. I will read the copy, right? Because I want to hear it in my voice because I want to write in my, right? But, uh, but I don't. So here's what the audio copy sounds like. It's going to sound different, but this is at 400 words a minute. I will generally make it faster when I'm listening to it with my, in, you know, with my headphones on on my iPhone. But uh, here it is. So I'm going to mute myself for a second. Book driven. Understanding thoughts harnessing the genetic gets shared. Entrepreneurs. Navy SEALs. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain the thought without accepting it. Aristotle, there is a moment of acceleration, satisfaction, success, and freedom. Freedom from everything that would have previously stopped you. Freedom from can't, should, maybe, and someday. Freedom from the persistent battle between your internal state and your external state. The real question becomes, how did you get here? Well, it came through a day of meditation, but not like anything you've ever experienced. You see, as a part of the driven, we are often a constant battle in our heads. Our focus and attention may be laser like in one moment, then completely dispersed, and then, in the next moment, right back again. We are driven and genetically designed to succeed at everything we do, good and bad alike. After three decades of research, we now understand what is going on internally and how that impacts our external world. Driven is crafted to guide you as you move through moments of hyper focus and hypo focus. You will find yourself more connected to your most primal instincts, and in that moment, you will be capable of accomplishing anything you set your mind to. Now well into my 40s, I've often looked back on my life, having always known I was different from most Doug shared his doctoral thesis. So that's what my book notes sound like. Um, and, you know, it's always like a balance, right? Like how much new information versus reviewing old information. It just really, I, and I, I would be lying if I said I had any kind of like thought out process on that. It's much more haphazard. Um, but but it works for me, right? So it's the same with the elliptical. I'm still really kind of, I'd say right now, trying to figure out what that right balance is between reviewing old versus inputting new. Um, and then I get really interested about topics and then I go really deep into a topic. And, and so that will also, if I'm not like in that mode, I'm doing a lot of reviewing and then I get interested in a topic and then all of a sudden I start really consuming a crap load about that. So, uh, let me tell you, and maybe Chris, you know about this. I don't know if you do or not. Um, but, uh, yeah, I did a, you know, I haven't made it a, uh, uh, I haven't made it a secret. I did, uh, I did a lot of drugs when I was younger, um, in my twenties, uh, a lot of ecstasy, quite a bit of marijuana, uh, not so much these days. Um, but I probably did a little damage to my, my short-term memory and I pay a price for that now. Um, and so I've always wanted to improve my working memory because there is a high correlation between working memory and intelligence. Uh, the more like that you can hold in your brain at, the, at any given time, the more you can do with it. And so that's why. And so the, done some research, which I was not aware of, um, call, that there is this one game, because most games are bullshit, like Luminosity and all that stuff, which I thought worked. Like, I never used it, but I'd he heard that of good things, but then the research came out and kind of, you can get better at those games, but those games don't, sp like, they don't, they don't, they're not helpful in anything else. They're just good at that game. Uh, but there's something called NBAC. N hyphen back. And um, what NBAC is, is a game that is hard and it's for your working memory and it will improve your working memory if you do it daily i like it it's kind of a cool game and what it is like the one i'm using i'll show it to you really quick if i can let's see oh well i can actually show it to you this is so cool this is fun uh, yeah, NBAC. That's right. Uh, Chris asked if it's NBAC. Yeah, that's the name. All right. So, uh, Oh, okay. 
How about, uh, how about that, uh, those number of emails I got to get to, 206,315. Yeah, not going to happen anytime soon, right? Uh, <laughs> anyway, here's end back. Now, what n back is, is the n equals, right? n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, right? But um, that's the number of moves that you have to remember. So n equals 1, right? You're going to see, like, I'm going to bring it up on screen in a second, but you're going to see, like, almost like a tic-tac-toe board. And, in, and, a, and a box is going to light up, and they're going to say a letter. You're not going to be able to hear the letter, I don't think, unfortunately, but... Uh, because of the way something's working right now. But uh, it says a letter, and then it lights up a box. You have to remember both, right? So N equals 1 would be, like, the very next move, does either the letter or the box match what was there before? At N equals 2, you then have to be able to, like, two moves ago, was the box or the letter the same? N equals 3 would be three moves ago. Was it the same box or the same letter and equals four would be four moves ago. So this is what it looks like. I'm just going to show it to you. I wish you could hear it, but you won't be able to, I don't think, which kind of sucks, but let me see. Maybe I don't think this will make a difference, but, uh, Oh no, I can unmute it. There we go. Hopefully this works. Okay. So this is N equals three. I'm not even going to try cause it would just embarrass myself right now. I'm only good at N equals two, but I'm good enough at N equals two that it keeps moving me to N equals three. And then I fail at it and it moves me back to N equals two. C. O. H. C O H. A. C O H. A. B. So that's position. A. Right. That's sound. K. Right. So J. I'm going to stop now. Um, but that's how it works. And this has been proven. Let me now uh, put it back to me. This has been proven to increase your working memory. And, uh, and it also helps you compartmentalize. It helps a bunch of stuff. So I suck at it. Uh, what I can do uh, more when I'm proud of what I can do, I'll show you more. Um, but uh, right now, uh, doing that daily I've added to my meditation practice. Um, I do it before my meditation practice and I'm trying it after to see which, when I'm better. And I would imagine after, but we'll see. So what do you guys think so far? Is this a useful live stream today? Even though I did not cover what I wanted to. Uh, um, Milos wants to know, um, are those emails for swiping? Some are. Um, I don't check emails every day and the people that know me best know that if they want my attention and they're going to send me an email, they need to text me and let me know that they just sent me an email and this might be selfish. It probably is. So I apologize in advance for being selfish to the world, but emails represent other people's priorities to me. They do not represent mine. Uh, and so I'm cautious because I have a brain that can often take, like almost has an agenda of its own. So I have to be careful what I expose myself to. And like, if I go into email, I could lose an hour. Like, so I purposely try not to, if I can avoid it. And uh, I just don't want to live in my email box. It's not, you know, even when I write to this day, I, gen I generally write on by paper in hand, because like, it's just too easy for me in a moment to be like, uh, how, well, what's the research say about that? Or like, let me just check if I ever wrote this before. And then next thing I know, I lost an hour. So I like, I need to, like, I generally will go outside. Um, I haven't even kind of shown you the, like the property and everything. At some point I really should. It's a pretty cool house. Uh, don't know if you like this house was built in 1829. Teddy Roosevelt stayed in it. I was in Manhattan this past weekend because Kim rented it out uh, because someone had a wedding here uh, this past weekend, which kind of sucked because I had to move absolutely everything, unpack, pack up, put it in boxes, lock it all up. Um, yeah, uh, kind of crazy. Uh, anyway, uh, 
So that's it. Okay, so my goal, though, was today not to show you that presentation. It just so happened that that's what uh, ended up happening. Oh, thanks. Uh, that's, I, I appreciate the positive comments, guys. I really do. Good stuff. Thanks. One of the best live streams. I uh, loved it. Any chance you can share a link to the presentation you did this weekend? I can't because it's a it's a paid for thing. But at some point, I will uh, do more. Uh, I hate old houses, to be honest with you. This is Kim, like Kim had this before we met, but I dig this house. I like ultra modern houses personally. Um, uh, thanks, Louis. Um, all right, so cool. Uh, so let's dive into at least for the next 20 minutes, right? Um, what we were going to cover, but before I trans transition, I feel like I'd be doing you guys a disservice if I didn't at least open it up to questions. So, uh, so tell me like, before I go on, is there any questions that you have about anything I showed you? Because like I wasn't, I was showing you all this to hopefully inspire you to come up with your own learning process to figure out what you're going to optimize your brain for and then figure out the best path to getting there. And, you know, it, we never, it's a never ending journey. You don't ever get anywhere and like, and be like, okay, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Um, so if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. If not, I'll just proceed to more of the skill tree kind of stuff. put this cool um all right yeah so nina wants to know uh so the process is first listen to the book well listen as it's pacing and i'm doing that on the elliptical and i'm doing that with voice dream like sleeping at night so uh that's what i do but you know uh before that I just read it in Goodreader. And before that, I read it on hardcover. So it just depends, like, you know, what works for you. Um, for me, like, when I used to read hardcovers, like, uh, my ex-wife and I, like, we went to Barbados for a month. And when I would go away for a month, like, I literally had to pack a, like, a suitcase full of books and then overpay for being overweight and uh and take them with me and then take them back like and now like i have a gazillion books in here right like i have not only thousands of books i haven't read i have thousands of books i have read and it's all in this little thing and everything i need to do is in this so this is now like even though i saw no need for an ipad when they first came out if I could only have one device in my life, it would be this. Um, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve Jobs. Um, so that's the process. Yeah. But, you know, to each their own. Like, look, I'm not saying that what I do is best. I have no idea if what I do is best. Um, but what I do know is that it works for me. And I think that that's really what everyone needs to figure out for themselves. You can try what I do, and that's why I'm sharing what I do, but don't think like that you need to do it the way I do it because like you might, one, come up with a better way, but you'll definitely come up with a better way for yourself. And I am constantly evolving what I do. So if I can find a better way to do it, I'm going to do it. And, uh, but, but, I, but I do really believe that as entrepreneurs, we have to constantly ratchet up our performance where we compete in a it, we're in a winner take all society these days and we're competing the world over. Right. We compete with entrepreneurs all over the world from India to China to Japan, like anyone can compete with us to go and go after our customers. So how are you going to stay ahead? How are you going to be able to compete. And I think that being at the top of your game mentally certainly is a big part of it. Uh, so let's see. Too long right now, Milos. And it's not thing that special. It's just about aggregating information. Um, I can show you what I'm working on right now. Uh, sometimes I'll do it for a really important book. So let me just see here. Hold on. 
Like, so it's not done yet. It's actually in the raw stages, but I'll show you one anyway. Uh, let's see, where the hell is... Wait, where the hell did I just put the video? There it is. Okay. Uh, um, all right, let's see here. Um, let's get rid of Milos here for a second. And why are you seeing that? And not seeing this. There we go. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't belong there. Somehow, this is an email that was sent automatically. Okay. by title did I put it in here hmm where is it oh I know where I'd probably put it okay hold on a second oh here it is Okay, so, so this I also learned from Tiago. Give credit where it's due. Summarize the book in a tweet. I haven't done that yet. Nor would I ever tweet it because this book was never released and he's writing a different version. Uh, my top three takeaways. Who's the intended audience? The overall satisfaction. Different... Diff difficulty slash complexity, top three positive points, top three negative points, most important concepts, my thoughts, All right? So now here is the process, right? So this is everything I highlighted in this book, right? Uh, and it like, so here we go. This book is about turning your ideas into reality. So then turning your ideas into reality, right? Uh, this book is for people who want to make a difference in these areas by making something. It is for the creators of the world, right? So... Hey, does this look familiar? Information is now the raw material of our daily reality. Like the very first slide, right? Like this is where it comes from. That's my point. Now, like here are my thoughts, right? Like, so this is what I'm getting into a conversation, right? With, so the, like because this book and because I have so much respect for Tiago, right? And what I've learned from him that like I want to turn his book into something more than I just read. Something that I fully internalize in every way, shape, and form, right? So, um, so like, here is my thought on, like, just really just this little bit of text, right? Like, this little block here, now my thoughts. Information is now the raw material of much of our daily reality. How you consume and manage information flowing through your life is now one of the most decisive elements in your effectiveness. It's a profound thought. It's less about what you're exposed to than what is seen, distinctions. What is captured, Evernote. What is processed, build your second brain. And what is found when it comes time to create. And unfortunately, it's not intuitive and it's something most people are knowledgeable enough, are not knowledgeable enough to create their own system. Whoops. Right? It's an entirely new way of working. It is not just different or slightly better and therefore requires a shift in a few perspectives from the way you work and how you do your work to using your curiosities and what fascinates you to guide you on everything from the content you consume to the output you create in your job, business, and overall life, right? So like those are now my words, right? Except for this little top thing here. Um, and then here's the next one, right? So this presents enormous opportunities, the tools of creation, publishing, right? So this is his little like another note that I highlighted, right? And then it says, reminds me of how impossible the success of the manifesto would have been before the internet. To write a 31-page document, post a PDF to my blog, and have $3.5 million a month later, and an eight-figure business with clients throughout the world was in the realm, was not, oh, wow, was not in the realm of reality before online marketing, and it's never been easier. That is, if you are able to create something worth spreading, but that brings us back to what your creative process is for creating value. So, like, my thoughts will then all be aggregated. And now, like, what Tiago's book has given me is my perspective about it. Because, like, my thoughts are running through this whole thing, right? So, like, 
here's the next one. And this will be the last one I'll show you on this. Um, okay, so what did he write, right? Without new methods of managing this flow, extracting what's relevant and important and putting it to use, we will continue to be overwhelmed by the information we're exposed to every day instead of being empowered by it, right? So, and a few other things here. So I wrote, odds are that right now you could most likely split the content you consume into two categories, what you find interesting versus what you should read for your business or work. Right out of the gate, that points to a problem. Ideally, they should be one and the same. If it, if, if, if they aren't one and the same, it might be the cause of an enormous amount of procrastination and time spent exploring what's interesting at the expense of what's profitable. Another challenge the split causes is it pulls you away from your instincts. It causes you to disassociate from your impulses to explore what interests you, which severely hampers your ability to leverage your instincts throughout the process. This is more costly than you might realize since your instincts are your direct messages from your subconscious brain, the storehouse of everything you've ever seen, experienced, and know. I would bet you burn a significant amount of mental energy. We only get a limited amount of it daily, making decisions about what you should do with the different information you come across during the day, in addition to the ideas you have on your own. If you are like most people, long term, all of it is lost. There's no central repository to not only put everything you come across in, but to also guide you with using it to create value in your economic life. So... I don't know if that's helpful, Milos, but like, so it's just a, like my wisdom notes are a whole nother level where it's like, okay, this is like, I find this piece of work to be seminal and I am going to take it as like a, as a, ta as a project to take on almost to have a 10 hour, 20 hour, 50 hour conversation with this person through their book. And I'm going to take every idea that I come across and I'm going to like wherever it's, I don't want to make it sound like it's difficult because it's not like I'm only writing what inspires me. I'm not like, I'm not just like, oh, I got to write another, like, you know, I mean, <sighs> I know I'm not being clear. Uh, as you saw, like I wrote another note after just one piece right like and the reason I did that is because I felt as I read that I had something to say so this is just me anytime I'm stimulated by reading it like that's when I that's what these are right the those those yellow boxes that say my thoughts and so at the end I might my thoughts might be longer than Tiago's when I'm done with that book but think about that. Think about like the amount of content that that generates for me to use wherever I want, whenever I want. And then also how much absorption is there? I read it. I have the audio version of that, like of my highlights. I have it in a uh, voice stream. I have it in a uh, quick reader. And now I have it broken apart, like one paragraph after another where I'm like, I am in conversation with Tiago. And so hopefully, let me know, Milos, if that's, uh, there's more obviously to wisdom notes, but that will give you the gist. A lot of times it's multi stuff. So I will take all the highlights on a topic, throw it into one place, and now I'm going to do the same thing. Right? And what I was saying, and Matt, is like Matt and I are going to talk in a couple minutes from now. Um, right now, because I have a little less clarity than I would like about what I should be spending every free moment on, uh, I'm spending way too much time on the process stage and not enough on the output stage, right? So I'm not spending any extra time on the input stage, but I'm spending more time on the process stage, which is not a bad thing. And I'll tell you why. Um, so I think we'll end with this thought, which means I'm going to have to come up with another clean title. <laughs> um, but uh, for, because I don't like doing baits and switches, right? So I'm going to have to come up with another clever title to, to really cover what I wanted to cover, which I think is what you wanted me to cover, which was to really break down like the T based into skill sets. Um, so before we wrap up today, you can let me know what you'd like me to cover next. I'd really appreciate that.
also, I'm going to start saying this because I want to, um, I want to find someone because we, I know I'm jumping around and I apologize. This is my ADD somewhat unchecked. Um, so we did a poll. I think we did it in our Facebook group about what type of content people like the most and people like pre-recorded videos. That's a problem because I'm at my best in this format. Maybe not today. And I apologize if you agree, but, uh, but yeah, so I am looking for a great video editor. It would be great to find a video editor who's really into my stuff because then maybe they're going to be better at pulling out stuff. But I'd rather do a live stream like this for two hours and get a 10 minute great video that I can share with people who are unwilling uh, to come to the whole thing than to try and record a great 10 minute video on my own. So if anyone knows, if anyone is really good at video editing and is looking for like a freelance gig or knows someone who might be interested in my stuff, I don't really want someone who's not interested because then it's like, I don't know that they're gonna be that good at identifying what's good versus what's not. But if anyone knows video editing, um, shoot an email to m at strategicprofits.com. That's Matt's email. And uh, don't abuse that email address. But uh, if you know a great, if you are or you have a friend who is in this space, uh, I'd be really excited about that. Um, I need a great video editor. Uh, so I know I was going to cover one more thing and then I forgot what it was. Um, do I ever feel stuck? I spend a tremendous amount of time stuck. I'm a flawed person. I really am. I, I know sometimes like it might not seem that way here, but anyone who knows me closely knows I am. And, um, I've had to do all this just to be effective. Um, yeah. Um, you know, we're all human at the end of the day. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, you guys were going to tell me what I should cover next. And I'm going to answer some questions here. And so when you read hard covers or when do you read hard covers or in a regular way on an iPad? Well, I read in a regular way when I'm highlighting, right? Um, and I will read hard covers, but I really try to avoid it. And really, if I'm reading a hard cover, um, it's only because I can't get a digital version, but sometimes I will buy a hard cover, rip it apart, scan it all and turn it into my own, right? Like when Agora came out with their black book, like their company, it's like this thick. Um, I read it in, I think four days, like I, over one week, I read the whole thing. Uh, on the elliptical and I only was able to do that because I took the hardcover not the hardcover but the printed version and had it turned into an EPUB just by scanning the whole thing converting it to OCR and uh, then turning it into an EPUB so I do that but the only time I will read a book generally is if I'm on vacation or something and I just don't want to have my iPad with me or at night when I'm trying to avoid screen time before bed so I will pop open a book but most of my friends know that if they want to, if they want me to read something, it's so much better to send it to me digitally. Um, sometimes I will print stuff out, like I'll print out a sales letter because I want to read it on paper, right? But um, but most of the time I'm not reading hardcovers. I used to though, and I have a ridiculous. Also, that was the other thing. Like I have literally tens of thousands of books. I have what could be like a small public library. And it, it's just too much clutter. I, I like, I don't need it anymore. I don't want it anymore. Um, I'd rather have everything on my iPad and I can always print out anything I need. So, um, eventually I'd love to have that whole garage that is now just floor to ceiling bookshelves and all the things, the perimeter, all those book notes. I'd like that all to be gone. I would much, I want to like, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, I dream of simplicity. I don't dream of a mansion uh, on the beach, uh, you know, with a 50-room house. I'd rather have a small place on the beach with minimal possessions so that I can travel the world 
And not that I'm a big traveler, but I'd like to have that flexibility and not have to like pack and carry crap and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not there yet, but that's what I'd like to be. I want to be more of a nomad. Um, all right, let's see. Yes, I read fast, but fun books, business books, I struggled to try and comprehend on the first reading, so I need to work past that. No, I will work out a process for me, but I appreciate your insight. And you might find that by going through voice dream uh, and then reviewing it and highlighting it, it might get a lot easier. Remember, like then, you know, I don't... <sighs> As someone who highlights, right, um, I've had times where I didn't preview a book and I'm like, you know, I'm busy highlighting and then I get to the end of the chapter, the first chapter, and it's a summary at the end of the chapter that hits every single point that I was highlighting. Um, you don't know that unless you've gone through the book once. And I find that it's so much easier to highlight after I've gone through the whole book once because like now I have a context, whoops, for what's most important. Um, so without that context, it's sometimes hard, right? Like I like to know, I like theory before, before pieces of information, uh, very much so. And so I hope that kind of clarifies maybe why I do it the way I do. I hadn't thought about that, but I close sales daily. This is like, that was a great tip, Rich. Thank you. Oh, cool. Thanks for the value bombs, Rich. Off to do an Insta Live. We'll circle back to consume the rest. Cool. Good luck, Chris. Uh, got it. Thanks. It's not a chore. It's an inspired work. Exactly. Uh, well, Rich, mind blown. Your, your notes rock. Thanks. Uh, very flawed man myself. Yeah. You got to take the good with the bad, my friend, right? Yeah. Uh, with the positives comes in the negatives. You know, like when I was going through after my midlife crisis and I was working in all this transformation stuff, one of the things that one of the gentlemen told me was, uh, you know, because I was living a flat life and, and he was he was explaining to me the higher the highs, the lower the lows, and you got to be okay with that, right? And I had kind of like built my life, so it was like this. And then I, shock, I, I was enjoying my life. Um, so, yeah. Less is more, small and private. Is there a reason you're not highlighting EPUBs in the Apple book app? Yeah, well, because I don't know the best way to get it out of there. And then also you got to remember, like, I want it to be in a source where I can listen to it fast, which wouldn't be because in Apple books, I wouldn't be able to do it in quick reader first. And I don't know if it's worth reading and highlighting first. And, um, and I got to tell you, like, when I get into a book that I really enjoy in quick reader, no, well in quick reader, but like, I'm going to blow through most books really fast in quick reader, but in voice dream, like I can, um, in voice, I, I can go like sometimes crazy amount of times, like on a day when I got nothing to do and I like want to spoil myself, uh, spoiling myself sometimes is me being on the elliptical for three or four hours that day. It's not an everyday thing. It's not even like a weekly thing, but like sometimes I can get into a zone on the elliptical and I'm now just going through books and I love it. And it's like, I just like, and it's not the outcome that I love. It's the process. Like I just, I feel good. I'm exercising. I'm feeding my brain. It just, it's great. Um, yeah, but you can't read it fast. That's the problem. Like you can't, it doesn't, it won't read to you. It's not all that. Um, always been flat. Yeah. Well, then that's like, well, there's two things to that, Ian, and maybe this is helpful. Uh, one is, is like, yeah, you got to take the good with the bad. And then the other is, is that, uh, you know, I don't know what your life was like, but I've had trauma, uh, quite a bit of it. And so a lot of people get disassociated with their feelings and that's kind of where I'm at. Um, a lot of times, like one of the reasons why I journal so much is for me to get in touch with what I'm feeling because a lot of times I'm not. And, uh, it's also one of the reasons why I can go without sleep for long periods of time because I'm not in touch with my body. Right. Someone asked me how I'm feeling and I'm like, I think, which is not what I'm feeling. Um, so yeah, so I'm not, it's, a, you know, I, I, it's something that I work on. Um, but a flat life is not that fun. And, you know, I remember, uh, with the first guy that taught me internet marketing, Stephen Pierce, we were at, uh, his office, him and Alicia, his ex-wife and across the street from their office was a laser tag place. And 
as a break, we were teaching a seminar on Black Hat SEO because I used to do Black Hat SEO way before Strategic Profits. And, um, and so we went and played laser tag. And I think this was like 2004 or 5. And I literally, ha- I was laughing. I was having so much fun. And I was thinking about like, when was the last time I played a game where I was having so much fun, I was just laughing like like this. And it was sad because it had been so long. And so nowadays, I try to make it much more of a priority to fit fun things into my life because uh, it's not my nature. And also what I would say is, is that what I've realized now, I'll wrap because I didn't even realize I'm already five minutes over, but... What I realized is is that I needed to schedule my free time as if I was scheduling my work time. Because in the moment, I'll make the easy choice. And the easy choice is to not go to this place and do that, or not do this, or not do that. And so I have to schedule my free time so that I have my fun times. Because if I don't schedule it, I'm very easy to like escape it because of in the moment, making the easy choice, not the best choice. So... I really hope that this was valuable to you guys. I do this for you. Like, you know, I do it because I enjoy it. But at the end of the day, I do it because I believe I'm helping and I'm making a difference and I'm helping you become better. And if I, if I've done that at all, then I, then I'm happy to have done it. And I feel like my time is well spent. Uh, As always, if you got value from this, please share uh, this video and also make sure you join our group. If you haven't checked out Steal Our Winners, as a favor to me, just check it out. You don't have to buy it, but check it out. I think you'll be blown away by what is included at such a ridiculously low price. And uh, and by all means, I would love to really know what it is that I can help you most with. So, Matt, maybe we can like start a poll where maybe people can even like answer, like we did for what type of content as far as for like mode of delivery, uh, what I should cover during these live streams. Cause I'm an open book. You know, I don't try not to keep any secrets or any big ones at least. And, um, if I can, if there's anything that you think I know that would be helpful to you, uh, I want to share it. So once again, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'll be here on Thursday, uh, from six to eight. Eastern time. Uh, Until then, I'll be in the Facebook group or in Steal Our Winners. And um, until Thursday to higher profits beyond, Rich Sheffrin, over and out. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see everyone on Thursday.